Right. Um, so moving on, I don't think we'll need the whole slot for this, but I'm going to start by saying I'm uh, presenting this on behalf of one of um, our self-employment placement students. Um, I spoke about him earlier, it was Dennis from um, the graphic design company Wolfton Creative. He's actually done this small piece of research for us at Portsmouth. So what I'll explain to you first is the background to it. Um, about a year and a half ago, we'd put in a proposal. Um, every year at the university, departments can put in proposals for a bit of investment. Um, whether it's for a, to create a new position or a new project piece of work they want to do. So we put in a proposal from the Department of Employability um, asking for some money to recruit five of what we've termed and um, called student change makers. So these are students that we've recruited um, to work uh, roughly seven hours a week each on a very flexible contract um, for the Department of Employability across the academic year. So we've employed one <coughs> from each faculty because um, the idea was originally that they were going to do faculty and subject specific work for us, raising the awareness and engaging more students and academics in the work we do and the services we provide in employability and enterprise. What's happened actually is even though the students sort of belong to each a faculty each, they've all just mixed up and all just got in and, and worked with all faculties and students from all disciplines, which has been great and that's actually added to the richness of the work that they've done. So, as I said, the original plan was that they would get out there in the university and raise awareness um, and act as ambassadors for us. Um, but what we also decided to do was to um, get them working on some project work for us, so various projects. There was one looking at particular um, creative and cultural industry, first year students, why they weren't engaging with us. There was one looking at female entrepreneurship. I think the question was asked earlier about the gender balance. And in entrepreneurship in the university, it's a real imbalance. Um, of females to males, um, starting up businesses. And Dennis um, has taken on the research project um, of looking at the impact of the self-employment placement amongst students. Now, it was a really interesting one because it was twofold, really, why we chose Dennis for this, because he's a graphic designer. He's never really taken on any research. So we thought from him, from a development point of view, it would be great. It opened his eyes to a sort of a new world for him. Um, but the fact he was a self-employment placement student as well, he actually really got it. So as well as running his business, he was working for us seven hours a week as well. So the whole idea was to measure the effects of self-employment placement at the University of Portsmouth on degree classification and career choices. Okay, it was a very loose piece of work when it started. It was on an Excel spreadsheet. This is what we want to achieve. This is how we're going to achieve it. Okay, so I'm just going to talk to you about why we did it and said how and what did we find. So the primary objective was to measure the value of the self-employment placement in terms of student careers and their degree classifications um, and their graduate positions and careers in entrepreneurship and self-employment. Secondary objective, we wanted to create some case studies to include more details um, about the softer skills. And the third objective is we do want to create some SEP ambassadors and build up that alumni um, mentor pool. So how did uh, Dennis go about doing this? Um, he looked at all our data, we obviously shared all our data with him, and going back to 2012, um, we had 81 students who had undertaken the self-employment placement. Basically, he did a, um, as he said, he went on the internet and trawled their public profiles um, to see what he could find about each of them, mainly LinkedIn, um, and then he had to create two surveys. So we created two surveys because one, obviously, we still had we have the graduates who have already um, finished their self-employment placement, they've finished their final year, and they're out there um, either working for themselves or working in another position. And he also created a slightly different survey for our fourth-year students, so those who had um, just finished their self-employment placement and still studying in their final year. Um, and as always, engagement and trying to get people to respond was quite tough. I think that opened Dennis's eyes a lot as to how little students engage. Um, he got 25 um, people responding, 16 of those were graduates, so that was nice to know, and nine of those were, were in their final year. Uh, the limitations that he came across, obviously a lot of LinkedIn profiles are inactive. Um, graduates weren't keeping them up to date, the students weren't keeping them up to date. There was no way to reach students from earlier years. If someone had graduated in, say, 2013-14, they're not using their university email anymore. And if we haven't got that information, then obviously it's really hard to track them down. Um, and he found there's no guarantee that students will answer the survey. So what did we find? Um, 
Looking at the graduates, first of all, so these people that have gone on um, and left university now, 70% of graduates said that the step had affected them positively. The other 30% were neutral, so there was no um, negatives to it. Um, and 100% of the graduates said that it had helped them to get to where they are today. Um, it had helped them make informed choices. 58% of the graduates were now in course-related jobs to stay within their subject areas. And interestingly, 17% have started another business. So they're, they're not doing the, the one that they did during their placement year. They've started a new business. Um, and Santander did some research, and uh, that's 10% nationally of students that then graduate to go on to start a business. So already we're looking at more students um, that start another business. And, you know, it, we, we're going to do a lot more work on this, and we're going to dig into this a bit deeper. But at the moment, we could, you know, extrapolate and say, actually, you know, 7% difference there if the students have done the self-employment placement. So looking at degree applications, and again, this is very, very rough, very, very, you know, basic data. Um, but what Dennis found from his work that was first class, 56% of students who had done the self-employment placement got a first class degree, and 38% um, got the upper second class. When you compare that for the 2015-16, just generally, um, only 23% got first class. Um, compared to our 56%. So again, it's really rough, you know, and is it down to that? We need to do a lot more work to find out. And what we also need to do is to compare it to the work that's been done in the past on traditional placements and the degree cl classifications, because, you know, it is known that those students that go out on a traditional placement do tend to get the higher degree outcomes. So as I said, just very rough comparisons at the moment for the graduates. Uh, fourth year students are those still studying, 90% uh, answered there's been a positive impact, so it's getting a bit higher, um, and 22% of the final years are saying they have plans to start another business. Um, so it's interesting, they've got plans, and if you go back to that one, 17% had started another business, so it would be interesting to see those final year students, how many of that 20%, 22% do actually carry on and do it. Um, <coughs> Going back to that one now. Lost that one. How do I go back to that? Oh, there, there. Yeah. That's it. Do you need to put it back? Yeah, put it on. I've done that. Um, from the current side? Yeah, lovely. Thank you very much. Yeah, so um, as I said, it was a really, really quick run through of some of the research, but I think already it's just showing some really interesting outcomes. Um, and we do plan on digging a bit deeper, maybe doing a more longitudinal piece of research, um, looking at what their predicted grades were for degree outcomes compared to what they get as well. So beginning to, to track the students now um, and maybe take a, a few years over doing it. But I think, um, I said, that was, yeah, that's, that's the end of the, the show. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, very quick. But any questions or anything? If anybody has questions now or afterwards, then I just want to share it with you, really.